Holy shit! It must be time for another episode of Hybrid Plays! Well, now that I've changed out of my pajamas and taken care of that strange ringing noise, we can get to talking about today's featured game, Heat Signature. Heat Signature is a game where you dock your spaceship onto bigger spaceships and kill a lot of people for money and prizes. You embark on missions from the space station hub, track down your targets, dock onto their ship, do what needs to be done, and escape before all hell breaks loose. As you can see, you're not playing the role of some ordinary traveler here. You're a- A dentist! No, you're a- A fireman! No, you're a- A giraffe! No, you're a bounty hunter! Heat Signature has you taking on the role of a futuristic mercenary, killing targets, stealing treasures, and taking over territories, one colorful nebula at a time. Heat Signature technically fits into many genres. You've got action RPG, top-down shooter... A racing game? No, that's not it. Maybe a visual novel? No. A party game? Games with party hats? No, you can't call like, it that. Um, it could be a game, like a sad game, like you cry during it? A crying no. game, maybe? Maybe a Jew, like a Jewish game kind no, of? No, not a like, Jewish game, you know, it's not Nora kosher. Kind of game. But what I'd like to call it is an immersive sim. Immersive sims are games that focus on player choice. They're games that put you in situations that have multiple solutions, rooms with multiple doors, stories with multiple endings. Immersive sims are just that, immersive, because the choices that you make impact not only the moment, but sometimes the rest of the game. For example, in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, you can either save these important people, or save a lot more less important people. In the moment you have to make this decision, your choice will likely be based on your past experience in the game. How much do you like or hate these important guys? How much sympathy do you have for the general populace? Can you even trust that you can truly save one of these two parties? Is there any hope of saving both? It's here where the immersion comes in. These choices are your own to make, and dealing with the consequences is just part of the fun. Well, fun for us anyway. Now many immersive sims are also action games, so when it comes to player choice, we often see this gaming decision. Combat or stealth. Even action games that don't necessarily fall into the immersive sim category still feature this choice most of the time. Games like Splinter Cell, Ghost Recon, Hitman, and plenty more have all explored this field a great deal. Do you sneak in with a silenced pistol and remain unseen? Or do you just equip the machine gun and hope for the best? Knives or grenades? Disguise or body armor? Gay or straight? I swear to god. So here's where I come in. My goal for today's episode is to break down the logic behind setting up situations that give the player choice. After some considerable studying, I've decided that there's two main fields we need to cover. Let's start with the first. Tools of the trade, aka giving the player items that support a wide range of playstyles. Village. Splinter Cell Blacklist is a game where you play as a stealth operative and kick everybody's ass. You're given a large variety of items and weapons to take advantage of, so whether you want to be silent or violent is completely up to you. The game narrows down its methods of attack to three categories, Ghost, Panther, and Assault, with Ghost being the stealthiest and Assault being an all-out attack. Different actions will reward you with points in each respective category. For example, killing someone with your knife and hiding the body gives you panther points, while running into a room and lighting the place up with an M16 gives you assault points. Meanwhile, using a drone to scout out an area and avoid all interaction with the locals is the best way to earn ghost points. When you look at Splinter Cell's arsenal of weapons and tools, you can kind of picture where they lie on the graph. Some tools are clearly meant to aid in assault gameplay, while others have much stealthier purposes. Not only are each of the three categories represented by the tools on this graph, but they're all represented evenly. If there were a ton of unsilenced weapons and only one non-lethal item, players would be much more likely to lean towards Assault given the wide range of options they would now have within that branch. But Splinter Cell has a balanced amount of support for each branch, making each method just as viable as the others. Heat Signature does this as well. The game provides you with items based on both stealth and action, with an even amount of support in each branch. For example, if you want to go undetected, you can hit someone with a wrench, but if you don't care about detection, you can just use a shotgun to your heart's content. Heat Signature, like Splinter Cell, also succeeds in balancing out its playstyle support. 
There are just as many options for stealth as there are for violence, and all are just as viable as the rest. In my opinion, I think that stealthy is better. Listen, I respect your opinion, but could you please stop interjecting during the episode? What did you just do? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking- Hang on, you guys. I'm sorry. Are you fucking out of your mind? Come here! Come here right now! Giving the player the right tools to support any given playstyle is a step in the right direction, but it actually only takes care of half the design process. The other half is what I like to call situational structuring. It's not just about giving players access to multiple methods. It's about setting up situations so that they can be conquered multiple ways. The environmental layout needs to encourage choice and creativity. Let's look at how situational structuring is done in Deus Ex. Many rooms feature air ducts that you can climb in. These aren't just opportunities to get around, they're subtle invitations to a stealthier playstyle. You could kill one guard and alert the others, and then use the air duct to move away from your last known position and route your enemy. Or you could climb in there to avoid the guards entirely. A turret can pose a formidable threat, but if you do enough snooping around, you'll eventually find the computer that controls that turret. You can either shut it off and keep things quiet, or turn it against your enemies and make things chaotic. Situational structuring certainly isn't limited to shooting games. Let's look at a game that's all about player choice, Scribblenauts. In this game, anything you write down appears at your disposal, so situations are bound to have more than one answer. You have to get up somewhere high. Do you spawn boxes and jump up? Do you make a ladder? Use a helicopter? Do you call in a bomb threat? You can do any of these What things. did you just say? I said, use a helicopter. No, before that. Build a ladder. I, I don't think that's what you said. Well, what did you think I said? Well, I don't think that I should be repeating it. Well, did it sound like I said calling a bomb threat? Yeah, yeah, that's it! Well, that's not what I said. Now let's look at situational structuring in Heat Signature. Look at the guards on the ship. They aren't just waiting for someone to attack them. They're going about their everyday routine. Enemies will operate computer terminals, stand in groups, and even sit and fly the ship. These routines present you with playstyle opportunities. Because the enemies walk around the ship, you could wait until a bunch of them are grouped together and throw a grenade. Or you could figure out the path that they take and lay a trap for them in their way. Or you could wait until one of them leaves to operate a terminal and take him out while he has his back turned. Here's something that I thought was very interesting. Ships and heat signature aren't just flying indefinitely, they're actually headed somewhere in real time. If you stay on an enemy ship for too long, it'll fly right into its home base and you'll be captured. Thus, this countdown shows how long you have on each ship before the base is reached. However, if you manage to kill the person piloting the ship, the craft will fly off course and the countdown will disappear. This is important because it adds another layer of strategy to each mission. Do you try to get to the pilot right away and kill him to end the time limit? Or do you just go about the mission at hand as quickly as possible? If you rush right to the pilot, you run the risk of blowing your cover. But if you stay stealthy and ignore him, you'll have to move fast. Adding this mechanic really does a lot for Heat Signature's situational structuring. The reason that situational structuring works is because the player has different tools to utilize in the first place. Therefore, these systems are dependent on each other. Robust arsenals are only useful if the situations in-game support the use of different tools. Having the enemies stand in groups is a great way to encourage the player to use a grenade, while having the incentive to take out the pilot might make players more apt to be stealthy until they have a clear shot at it. Is that my keyboard? How did you- Don't you- So that pretty much covers it for today's lesson. If you want to empower your players with choice, you just need two things. Tools that represent various playstyles, and situations that encourage the use of those tools. Remember to think about situational structuring when you're designing environments for your game. If you want your players to do as they please, the level design should provide them with various opportunities. Hey you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to play Heat Signature, there's a link to the game in the description below. And if you want to follow the game's creator, there's also a link to his Twitter down below. Please be sure to like the video if you found it helpful, and leave whatever comments you want. I love reading comments, so you don't even have to write anything that has anything to do with the lesson. And if you want to support the channel financially, you can head right on over to Patreon, where you can throw me a couple bucks and I'll give you a kiss on the cheek in return. But like I always say, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again for watching. Have a good day.
I made a mess. Uh oh. That's how you clean up. That's how it's 